All right, here we go. Georgetown is catching 16 and a half points in Philadelphia against Villanova. I'll take the points in the Hoyas. I just think this, I, I can't lay 16 and a half points with Villanova against anybody really. So I will take the Hoyas Villanova wins by 12 Mac. Is it a little worried that they're coming off a win? Like they, they, I feel like this is a bait to take George. And I'm going to lay it actually with Villanova. Villanova does need some style points are on the bubble. And I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Villanova laid here, but I'm not going to bet. I'm not going to lay this many points with how slow Villanova plays. That win Nick? was questionable too. I mean, I can't believe I, I watched some of the Georgetown DePaul game, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, there might have been a whistle on that last possession by DePaul. It looked like the guy might have got fouled. It's a very questionable win there. But no, I'm with Mac. I'm gonna I'm gonna lay the points. I mean, Nova has won their last three home games all by double digits. They won in DC against Georgetown by exactly 16. I'm gonna lay it, but I don't I don't feel great about it. That was a closer game, though. If you go back yeah. and watch that game, Nova pulled away really late. That was like a six, seven point game for a lot of the way. And I think Georgetown's played better on the road this year than at home. Shout out to so. Jamie H O V. I know he often plays in our, our, our DFS is talking about Brumball starting Brumball has been uh, very underpriced lately. I've been rostering the hell out of him. So he, he might be onto something there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not a rip, uh, reptilian person says, where the fuck is the college baseball experience uh, available? iTunes, Spotify, also youtube.com slash the college experience. We'll have more episodes this week. It's hopefully you cashed on East Carolina as they beat the shit out of those cowards, North Carolina. Um, next up Davidson's getting 10 and a half at Dayton. I normally make so much money on this play, <laughs> but they've finally adjusted. <laughs> they finally adjusted. I'm still laying the 10 and a half. I'm still laying the 10 and a half, but they finally adjusted before normally Davidson will be like in third place and they'll be like two, two point spread. And I'm like, Oh man, D Dayton's athletes are going to fuck them up. Um, maybe Davidson being in 10th, the, the, they, they corrected it, but I will still lay the points with Dayton. I think Dayton can presents a ton of problems with it. I've been me and NC Nick. I've been to that UD arena. It gets rocking. I will lay the number Mac. What are you doing here? Oh yeah, this is uh this is a bait right here to take Davidson in my opinion. I like you said, Dave, Dayton has had their number. Dayton's also coming off a rare loss. Dayton lost um to uh George Mason last week. They've had what a week we, off here. We should lock this. We should yeah, lock this. they've had they've had six days to get right here. I'm gonna lay it and lock it. Dayton flyers back at UD Arena. Fly, fly on, double lock. Let's go. And see Nick, it, what are you doing over there? So, sometimes. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead, Mac. I was gonna say I was at uh, the Davidson game. That was a heartbreaker against Richmond. Back to back road spot. Sometimes that time off isn't a good thing. Sometimes it, you know the the team comes out a little sluggish. And Davidson on the road lately, they've been right there. I mean, they lost uh, in, in overtime to, to to Bonaventure only by three at Richmond. To Colby's point, I mean, David uh, Dayton has won eight in a row in the series, but I got Davidson covering this. I think you guys were against me last week with uh, who, who was coming into Davidson. And Davidson was laying like seven and a you half. You did hit. You did hit. I forget that. who was. I, I don't yeah, remember was, who either. I, but it doesn't matter. But go Davidson. Shout out to son of Pete. Dayton is laying nine and a half on DraftKings. So get on over there. Your, uh, and, your North Carolina bias is showing again. Yeah. <laughs> Might be true. Um, yeah. Your private school pussy bias is showing again. Um, Dude, <laughs> I, I went to one game at Davidson when uh, when Seth Curry was still playing. Fantastic game, went in overtime. College of Charleston beat them. It was it was awesome to see that that crowd. I mean, I don't hate Davidson, but the crowd just went silent. And uh, it was when it was when Bob uh, it was when Bobby Cremens was uh, coaching Charleston. Great game. Yeah, so, uh, Steph Curry at Davidson is still mind boggling to anyone that covers the sport. I feel like just like how the fuck <laughs> did so many universities whiff on that, especially Virginia Tech. Yeah, I mean, D Del Curry sends his tape to Seth Greenberg. That's why Seth Greenberg is not qualified to talk about court storming. <laughs> All right, you're not qualified to talk about court storming. He's like, yeah, you know. Uh, first off, you know, I don't know. Well, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole again. But Virginia Tech definitely, uh, you benefited off a few court stormings yourself there, Seth Greenberg. But um, fucking Greenberg. <laughs> 
Wisconsin's laying four and a half in Assembly Hall against the Indiana Hoosiers. Oh boy, I'm all, so my first. I was on the SGP show. Fucking team so much. I was on the SGP show and I went with Wisconsin. I did a show after that with CJ Sullivan, who was kind of convincing me to take Indiana. He's like, they fought hard, but no, I'm going to stick to my guns, even though Wisconsin's three and seven on the road. Terrifying to me. Yeah. Terrifying to me to take Wisconsin on the road, but I just don't know where the pulse of this Indiana team is. I know Sullivan old Sullivan, no, the, the bet detective says they're fighting hard for Mike Woodson. I'm laying the points. No bet. What are you doing here, Mac? Uh, I'm not taking fucking Indiana again. I can tell you, I've had enough of that fucking team. <laughs> they, I've had enough good spots. They're due, and they just keep uh, dropping egg. They, 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 they can't make shots. I, um, I'm actually gonna lay it with with, with Wisconsin here, but I am not gonna bet this game. These two teams are very unreliable. And see, Nick, what are you doing here? I'm going to go with CJ and take the home dog here. But uh, like you guys, I'm not going to bet this because of everything you said. They are very unreliable. Yeah. There's a four at DK also for Wisconsin. So if you're taking Wisconsin, if you, if you're, I'm not betting this, but I'm saying if you're going to bet this shop around, um, I have a lock right here. Loyola Chicago is catching three at St. Bonaventure. Wait, let me get this straight. Oh, Loyola Chicago, who is nine and one in their last 10. And actually, I think if you go even further back, I think it'd be like 13 out of 14. Uh, they're six and three on the road and they're getting points against Loyola's in first place in the A-10 against mm-hmm. sixth place. St. Bonaventure. Fuck out of here. St. Bonaventure's winning this game. Lay the number. It's gone up a half a point since the show at, at, at noon. Why does it keep going up? They know something. Mac, what are you doing here? Uh, we love these spots. I mean, the Loyola, they've won seven in a row. It's They've done a great job under Valentine this year. But like you said, they're going to the Bonnies. Hard place to fucking play up there in upstate New York. They're due. And the Bonnies are really good at home. Great spot for the Bonnies. I will lock it with you. Let's go. The line makes no sense. I'm seeing four and a half, too. Woo. Here we go. That's what I'm saying. The line makes absolute no sense. If you plug it into, so we, we sometimes have to make up lines and I would love to know what the cocktail napkin says. Cause when we, we, when we make lines on the SGP show, we plug it in use this algorithm sort of, and this would have Loyola favored by five. What does the cocktail napkin say? Noah Bonaventure minus one. So I guess That's it's all over I the fucking place. Be a pick. I thought it'd be a pick. I'm diving in the stink. I'm pulling up Patty C and taking the points. I'm not going to lock battle you guys though. Cause I mean, yeah, this line smells, uh, the Georgia Bulldogs and blue cane traveling to Baton Rouge. This is a hilarious game. SEC network. Uh, so Georgia is two. They have two. They've only won two of their last 10 games. But LSU's only won three of their last ten games. But LSU's just happened to be against two teams that are going to be in the dance. Uh, you figure it out. College basketball, hilarious. Um, I think LSU's playing better basketball, and I guess three out of the last ten is better than two of the last ten. So my state would statement would be somewhat accurate. I believe they're athletically on a different level than Georgia. I will lay the points with LSU, but I don't love the play here. <laughs> I can see either team winning. Well, Mac, what are you doing here? Do you remember the first time these two teams played? I think it was a three and a half point line for Georgia and they won by two. I could see that <laughs> LSU winning by two here. Yeah. Um, the spot is great. It's their what? Um, third it's straight home f- game. Just got destroyed by Mississippi state. Yeah. That got- was, that's understandable coming off the big Kentucky loss though. Yeah. 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 It, that's it, fair. It feels I'm like an Kentucky LSU win. spot, but I don't yeah. trust this LSU team laying points. No. You're taking LSU, but no bet. I'm taking LSU, but I'm not yeah. bet. I'm not, sorry. I'm not locking it. Yes, I am. Yeah. I am going to take LSU, but I'm not going to fucking bet that. Like I kind of want to bet LSU. I kind of want to <laughs> bet the Tigers going in. Let's, you oh. know what? I, I haven't bet one yet. I'm, I've got an itchy trigger finger here. Let's go, oh, LSU. Yeah. Lay the points. <laughs> I might regret Nixon, it. We Tigers. 
<laughs> yeah, you should. You were talking about eating po' boys pre-episode. You know, you're, it was the life was telling you to take LSU. All right, that's right. I was um, telling a story when I was in New Orleans uh, in this little po' boy shop. Two people in front of me was uh, Aaron Sanchez, and if anybody watches the Food Network, you might recognize the name. And I, as soon as I saw him in there, I was like, oh man, I picked a good spot, and uh, I, I love a good po' boy. Yeah, is he, is he related? Any relation to uh, Ron Mexico? <laughs> yeah, <but> potentially, <laughs> um, folks. There was news today in college sports. The UMass Minutemen will be joining the MAC starting next year. Next year, so that sucks, man. Um, weren't they originally no, part of the MAC? They no, they were for a couple of years. Yeah, they were yeah. in it for a couple of years, but so, for basketball, right, right in the backyard. Come on, yeah. For basketball, I, it sucks, man. I think, I think it's it like for football too. No, I think it's I think it's smart for football because they play six MAC it's, teams every year anyway. Yeah, it's smart so, for football. Yeah, and basketball in the MAC is good. I don't know why you're shitting on the MAC, dude. It's not the A10. It's not the A10, but the they're A10. now in the top five of the MAC. Yeah, Kent but State, they, Toledo, yeah. Akron, Ohio are all good programs. They're good, but they're not. They're not VCU, Richmond, um, Dayton, Davidson. No, Dayton. but the problem, the, A-10, the problem I'm with the A10, the problem with the A10, not arguing you on that point. No, Pro- yeah. the problem with the A10 is no, they, they 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 don't have football programs. They should start right. football right. programs You're because right. that drives the fact that the needle. And I think NC Nick back to your to, to the football side of this. I think I don't like it. That, well, I think they had to. No, I know, but they had to do something because here's what you did. Very- you, you talk Youngstown State jumping up into the FBS. I, I want the MAC to be very Midwestern. I don't want it to be Northeastern. Well, you have Buffalo there, but um, Buffalo hang on, hang is on. more Midwestern than at least that's a rival for them, though. Um, my point was this, though: if there's a lot of talk about the next five to six years in college athletics and just crazy talk, shit that's never happened in the sport. You don't want to be an independent when that happens. I think that's why why they wanted to join a conference. They well, were sure. Talks. I I just don't think the Mac should have accepted them. <laughs> well, I I actually read a uh, a report today that the Mac might be interested in adding three other teams. Um, what they've had talks with Western Kentucky over the past two years, uh, but Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky won't go without Middle Tennessee, and Middle Tennessee doesn't want that. I don't see how I the heard- Mac is any better than the Conference USA right now. I mean. Which conference is the worst in football? I don't know. Mac was. I I think it was. It depends on the USA year because they don't have as many members right now. They are not looked as as strong. And plus, oh, the Mac, the Mac has a lot more stability. They have like the same yeah. ten teams for yeah. like the past it's seventy years. True. Yeah, conference USA yeah. just keeps getting picked at from yeah. you know the Sun Belt yeah. and whatnot. And Good point. Yeah. I saw a report though, Nick, that they would come calling for or interested in North Dakota state, Illinois state. And who was the third team? Maybe it was Western Kentucky. I'm not sure. Uh, or, or I don't remember the third team, um, See, but it, for me, North Dakota state screams mountain West. Not Mac. I would love that too. But if the, if the mountain I want West is my regionality, them, damn it. Yeah. If all the big yeah. conferences aren't going regional, I want the small conferences to have some regionality. This is True. just my wishes. So that they mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I was with Joe Paterno and having a Northeast Conference, and I thought the MAC would fit in great. But uh, yeah, I, I think A10 is much better in, in basketball than the MAC. Now, yeah, I will it, say this though, I will say this: I think the A10 lives a little off its reputation when they had Xavier, when they had some of the other the other money teams. They're not as good as they once were. And I I grew, grew up in that area. I loved the A10 when I was a kid growing up, and I still love it now but it's not as good as it used to be. Agree. But they, I still do love the, the home atmospheres. And I know no one pointed out like the top four, they, they do do a good job in the Mac, but the eight tens of to- a notch up from the, from the Mac and basketball, but football is King. I mean, it's called a spade a spade and UMass the Minutemen are going to have to take a back seat basketball wise. Yeah, it gives them stability for a football check. And I think that's, yeah. They're they're worried about if there's a separation or something, and you're, you're sitting there independent. They're not going to care. So for them, they, it makes sense completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You so, can you can win the MAC, and you can maybe have a bid into the playoff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's possible. Uh, Northern Illinois. The, I'm sorry, UMass is heading to Georgia, George Washington, the Colonials. Almost said Georgia, Washington. Uh, 
UMass is laying seven and a half points. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we should lock this. Oh man. George Washington has lost 10 straight games. How the fuck were they winning games? They were 14 and three, but Colby, they've covered four of the last five. I know. So they've been winning <laughs> kind of closely. I'm sorry. Losing kind of closely. It's almost impossible to do that. Like how the hell, like they beat VCU, they beat Davidson, they beat George Wash or George Mason by a big number. You know, they, they were beat Ohio out of the Mac. Uh, it's just like just two different teams. I feel like it's it's mind boggling in a way. I'll lay the points with UMass, but no lock. Mac, I'll lock. I'll lock. I'll lock UMass. This is for, this is Frank off a, off a loss. Frank's been really good off the loss recently. They beat what VCU by twenty. They beat Richmond by double digits on the road. He's gonna have those guys ready. GW, like you said, they they've been playing all right, but they're not the same. UMass. Minutemen. M- Moneyline Mag locking up the Minutemen. NC Nick, what are you doing here? I'm on UMass, but no bet. Northern Illinois is getting 14 and a half at Toledo. Toledo's coming off that upset loss to Bowling Green that uh triple lock. We caught uh, we caught on the money line. Oh yeah. Might have been a quad lock if no oh, one yeah. was involved. I think he was. Yeah, it was. Um wrong know. place, wrong time. Toledo wins by twenty. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, <laughs> Nick. Yeah, I agree too. Northern Illinois, the worst ATS team in, in in the conference. Good bounce back spot here. The Cincinnati, look, I I think I spoke early last time when Cincinnati lost to uh, TCU. I said that there goes their tournament chances. You want a way to get back into yeah. the tournament? You win yeah. this game. I, my fault. I didn't think about the next game they had was at Houston. Because they can totally get right back into the NCAA tournament if they win this game. It's a big if because Houston's undefeated at home this year. Yes, they are fifteen and zero at home, and they're nine and one in their last ten games. They're laying thirteen and a half. This has gone up a full point since the noon show. It was t- twelve and a half then, thirteen and a half now. What is the buy point on the noon show? I was on Houston. I'm still on Houston, but I. I wonder what that number would be for me to take Cincinnati. I kind of think it'd be 14, 14 and a half. <laughs> uh, Mac, what are you doing here? I am locking the Bearcats. Desperate spot. They're playing number one in the country. We know the trend of teams that get ranked number one. I mean, it's a big target on their back. And Houston, this Cincinnati, this is an old American game. Cincinnati's played at Houston before. I think they keep this game close, just like the first matchup. That was a five-point game. I know it's at Houston, but uh, give me the Bearcats. Lock it up. Two big points. Woo. It was only a five-point game at the Skyline Chili uh, Arena or whatever the fuck. NC Nick, what are you doing here? I'm with you, Colby. I think the Big 12 grind is starting to get to Cincy. They were kind of a nice story to begin with, but they've lost four out of five and seven out of ten. And you know, two of those wins were against UCF. Uh, so I think Houston just steamroll, uh, steamrolls them here. All right. Next, we jump to Mount Pleasant, Michigan, where rumor has it Phoenix. that the chips are number one on the Michigan rankings. <laughs> no, no, no. Despite their <laughs> despite their twenty eight point loss to uh, Miami, Ohio, that we were on on Miami, Ohio side. Um, this is where you buy back in. They're laying three and a half. Ball State's ass on the road. I am locking up the chips. Fire up ah. chips. Fire up chips. The Mac's been good to me a little bit here recently. Mac, what are you doing here? I'm on Ball State. Central Michigan, fulls of gold. I don't trust. Lock. State. Nah, I mean I, I'm with you too. I don't trust uh, Ball State on the road, but I think that they. Eh, I'm, I'm tempted. Yeah, let's go. Lock battle, lock battle, lock battle. Road <laughs> teams Nick, in the weekdays on the Mac are good, man. Let's go. Ball State. And you think want to jump on this wagon uh, over here? You know what? Uh, I mean, lock battles are fun. I probably wouldn't have bet this otherwise, but uh, I'll throw a couple bucks on the chips and ride with you, Colby. Let's go. Let's go. We're out of here. Fire up chips. Dundee and NC Nick. 
The rooftop's going to be serving cocktails all night. Moneyline Max rolling with the Ball State. Patty C's Ball State Cardinals. Um, that should be a fun one. Uh, you can talk me into a lock here. I, I will go to our ACC specialist on this one, but Virginia Tech is horrible on the road. Well, they one and eight on the road. Syracuse is 13 and two at home. The line, I need the bet detective on the case on this one because <laughs> Syracuse only laying one and a half. I'm taking Syracuse, knowing that honestly, you look at the remaining schedule for Syracuse, you say, well, they're home to Virginia Tech. They're at Louisville and at Clemson. Now at Clemson, they should be a dog, but it's possible to win at Clemson. They've proven to collapse late in the years, you, you know, year after year. So you're talking about they could be going 21 and 10. They could be 21 and 10 going into the ACC tournament, which would be a great first year for Adrian Autry. But why is this line only one and a half? And I want to take Syracuse. Is this a trap spot? Mac, what are you doing here? Yes, I think it is a trap spot. The the road ACC teams in the weekdays have been really good the last couple of weeks. Remember that one night where the road teams were all up like 20 within the first yeah. 10 minutes? Weeks Just not Virginia Tech, though. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. well, the Hokies, I mean, they were in the game on Saturday, and then the second half got away from them. Syracuse coming off uh, Jim, Jimmy Beheim day. I like, I like the Hokies here. Let's go. NC Nick, you could talk me into a lock with Syracuse. I mean, that's definitely my side. I don't take Virginia Tech away from Castle. Yeah, this not, stinks not, a little bit, though, right? This it stinks does a little bit. Stink yeah. a little bit. Uh, I'm on Cuse. I don't love it, but I like it. I like it enough where you could talk me into a lock. <laughs> I don't want you to blame me if this loses. I want to blame you if it loses. <laughs> Let's little do it. Bob, little Bob Costas pink eye special. Let's fucking go do into it, the man. stink. Why go not? into the pink. Why Let's not? go into the pink. Cuse. Let's go into the pink here. Double lock. Syracuse Orangemen minus one and a half against the Mahokies. The Akron into- Zips, <laughs> the Akron Zips are heading to Athens, Ohio. This is a fantastic game. This is like one of the most. What is it? This is one of the better games of the day. Here's another um, one. This one's fun. Akron uh, won by nine the last time they played. Uh, that was on January twenty third. This one though is is in Athens at the Convocation Center. All right, Ohio's ten and three at home. They've won seven of their last ten. Meanwhile, Akron's won seven of their last ten, but they did lose their last road game. Whew. Ohio's laying one and a half. The line is telling you. And this, when I did the the show this morning, I want to say it was at a pick. Um, I lean Akron, but. I don't feel good about this. No bet, Mac. Well, you, you you're missing a headline here too. Is uh, this is John Gross is old school. I mean, he he coached Ohio, got them to two Sweet Sixteens uh, when he was there. But I like to fade the coach when he goes back to his old summer. I think it's a distraction. So give me Ohio. They're going to win this game outright. Lock it up. Let's go, Bobcats. Whew. They're off the big win. This money line, Mac is lock it up. The Bobcats. Now, NC Nick, one of his favorite teams other than Duke is the Ohio Bobcats. He's, he's, uh, he, he drives by the stadium as often as he can get uh, anytime he's in the state of Ohio. Um, I've driven through Athens uh, quite a few times. <laughs> uh, are you going to back your boys here in a pivotal game? Usually I do. I, and this line is another one that fucking stinks to high, to high heaven here. I mean, Akron is clearly the better team this year. No doubt about it. The line smells, man. I, at first, I was going to take Akron. I was going to dive in, but I, I can't keep on diving into every stinky line. So what? Let me ride my Bobcats and go Ohio here. Let me switch it up. You should lock it. I don't think so, man. I'm, I'm staying away. <laughs> it's good. This is going to be a fantastic game. I can't wait for Ohio to win by two. <laughs> but by the way, uh, Coppin State did cover for us against Howard. We didn't bet that game. Um. He's, but he's we cool. did bet Bethune Cookman double lock. Bethune gets it done 90 to 84 in overtime. You know, Reggie Diaz getting it done for the never. We didn't sweat for a second. All right, getting it done. 
Also, uh, Florida A and M did go final. We did cash on that, and currently Pine Bluff has a nine point lead on Texas Southern at the eight minute mark. And Campbell might fuck up this game. It's down to three. It's it down to three overtime, with twenty seven seconds. Yes, one hundred percent. Terrified of this game. Mississippi Valley State's up four at halftime on Prairie View. Could it be the game for the Delta Devils? Could it be? I, I repeat. I repeat. Folks, Mississippi Valley State up four on Prairie View at the at the half. Yes, also Baylor is up eight on TCU at the fourteen minute mark. That's my second bet of the night. I think we're lock battling on, on that one, aren't we? Yes, we bear. are. Yeah. Go you Baylor. went with them Baylor Bears. Uh Buffalo, the Blue Bulls. Oh yeah, baby. Heading to Kent, Ohio to take on the golden flashes. This was Kent won by 31 on February 2nd. <laughs> sure. That was one of max locks, uh, but, but a different but, team but, recently, <laughs> baby, we've been rolling <laughs> except for uh, the last game at Western Michigan. I, I yeah. was on board too. Like you, you had sold me. Then I was like, man, come on, lose by 19 at, at the Broncos. Uh, you know, every and, time you need a little setback for the blue bowls. <laughs> well, it, Max not lying in a way they're four and 23 on the year and they've won two out of the last eight, which means they're playing much better basketball. That's the hot. They're yeah. hot. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I got to lay the number here. Kent state's going to drill them. Buffalo sucks. Lay the big number Mac. Uh, I love Kent state too. So I'll take, uh, I'll, I'll take Kent here. They're off the loss. I think they get right here. Call me crazy, but I think the numbers kind of fun. I, mean, I think it should be more than 15 and a half. And for that reason, I'm going to take Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's stay in the Mac. Noah being I expect to hear your voice on this one. Because the battle of Michigan is happening. Oh yeah, here we go. Western guys. Michigan is heading to Ypsilanti. Take on these Eagles. Western Michigan's only laying two and a half against Eastern Michigan. This game, this line, don't this reeks. This reeks. Both teams are, I guess, three and seven in their past. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't reek as much as I think. They're both three and seven in the past ten. Both ass. Eastern Michigan is a home dog plus one fifteen plus one twenty. I see out there. You love Noah. Eastern. My first thought was Western, but then you look at it and you say Western's two and eleven on the road. Eastern Michigan's eight and five at home. Maybe I should take Eastern. I'm kind of leaning Eastern right now. Your thoughts, Beanick, on these Michigan power rankings and what's going on in this classic at the George Gervin Center? Legendary the- finger rolls from the Iceman. The exactly. Michigan power rankings have been flushed down the toilet. They all suck. <laughs> I'll say this: uh, when you when you talk about like the the little in in, in state rivalries, this one uh, is not high up on Western Michigan's list. Eastern Michigan's the redheaded stepchild of the three directional schools in Michigan, because Eastern is kind of left out. Central Michigan and Western Michigan are the two rivals in the directionals. Eastern Michigan gets up for both schools more than Western and Central get up for Eastern. Uh, Cocktail Napkin has Eastern Michigan minus one and a half. I think the wrong team's favorite here. <laughs> I really have nothing else to go on, though. I think both of these teams, uh, I like the trend that Colby mentioned with uh, Western <laughs> Michigan struggling on the road and Eastern Michigan at least well, has a but, winning record but if, at home. But, so. but, but if you dive deeper, you're like, wait. Western's got a much better ranked defense. Western's defense, the defensive rating is like, you know, 40 spots better than Eastern Michigan's and their offense is like 75 spots higher than Eastern Michigan's offense from a rating standpoint. If you're diving into it, just saying they also have a better field goal percentage. They also shoot the three way better Eastern Michigan, by the way, 323rd in three point shooting. That's not good. Well, their defense um, is 334th in the nation, according to Kemp. We're, yeah, we're really diving what, into this game, huh? Western's is anybody going to actually bet offensive it? rebound. I, I, I'm going to take Eastern Michigan. I'm going to take me, Eastern Michigan. Me too. Yeah. Give me that little yeah. yapper. Mac, I'll take I'll take EMU, and we are going to overtime at Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I as soon as I saw that guy I go, oh my god, not only is he going to lose the money line, he's going to lose the cover in overtime now. Oh my god. 
I, I can't do this early show, guys. I can't do this early fucking show. <laughs> Overtime where the dogs <sighs> go to die, man. Oh, man. Hey, what was that? 15 point lead, 13 point lead with Dude, what? Like six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what'd you guys do? Uh, Eastern, right? We both Eastern. Eastern. We're all no, on Eastern. What did Noah Eastern. take? What did Noah I, I, take? I think he exited without picking somebody. Yeah, that's what I, I don't no, like. No, total Beanick right? yeah, like like move. Okay, yeah. <laughs> He's good at that. He's good at freaking <laughs> playing all the sides. He should run for office. Him, and, him versus Whitmer in uh, the election year coming out. <laughs> uh, so if, if we wanted to do a stink parlay, I know I said I took Akron, but I understand your guys logic on that line stinking with Ohio and Akron. Yeah. The stink parlay would be St. Bonaventure, Ohio in this game here, because you have to go back to 2006 for the last time, Mississippi state beat Kentucky in Starkville. Oh, yeah. Now it's been some close, close fucking games lately. I think Kentucky won by three last year. It was a double overtime game in Starkville three years ago. But Mississippi State, once again, they haven't won in at Starkville since 2006, and they're a three and a half point favorite against John Calipari, Rob Dillingham, and company. <laughs> Lock it up, Mississippi State. Lock it up, Mississippi State. Now, obviously, it was better at two and a half on the noon show, and the good thing is, is I did better at two and a half already. But this line stinks to fucking high hell right here. I feel like we're saying that about every game. And, you know, you guys hate the Thursday slate usually because of the the stinking lines. I feel like this Tuesday is the same thing, man. Every Uh, fucking one of them. I think there's, yeah, I guess you could add the Syracuse game to that too. So I guess you are looking at four of them, four of them right now that are a little stinky. Bonaventure. Yeah, I mentioned that. that? That's one of them. Yeah. Um, I'm taking Mississippi State. Lock. Mac, what are you doing here? Dude, this this is my system that that I've kind of created over the last couple of weeks. Is you fade the team that scored a hundred plus and won in a blowout fashion. This is Mississippi State. Kentucky just beat Alabama in an NBA game, one twenty or one seventeen to ninety five. Last time they did that, Vanderbilt one hundred nine. They lost to Gonzaga the next game against Georgia. They dropped one hundred five. They lost to South Carolina by twenty. Kentucky, their young team, up and down. This is a fade spot. Hail State, lock it up. And by the way. Anyone listen to this? If you're going to Starkville and storm. going to this game, storm. you better storm. And how about oh, this? Yeah. Anyone who storms, listen to this. Take take a video. You know you do the video. Everyone's doing it anyway. Take a video. F- make sure you hit that flip thing so we know it's your fucking face. I'll match your face. But we're gonna give you some shit from SGPN. How about a fifty dollar gift card and maybe something else? All right. Storm and storm yep. strong, baby. Just wait till the, the other players have left the court. And uh, I, I, I agree with no, you guys. Lock no. it up. Yeah. If you, if you leave the court, we will unfriend you and block you. All right. Um, they haven't unfriended and blocked me yet. So you're okay. It, it, it's all talk. Well, you're limited till Mondays only. <laughs> no, no, did Noah say he's on Hale State too? Uh, also, I only limit you guys with my presence on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did not say I'm on Hill State. I asked you if you were willing to put a bounty on it. <laughs> um, did you see the way Colby's face lit up when, when he when he progressed that in his head? <laughs> oh my god! Processed, processed. Um, sure. Um, yeah. Go to the right, game. We got a triple lock here. Play the music. Come on, let's go. Yo, hail State. Hey, re- hey, relax, buddy. All right, this guy's over here. Hail State minus the points. He just can't wait for him. He's he's a stork corm hater. So what? what can I you know. He, uh, he can't, can't wait for court, Cal Perry to bitch in the press conference. We need to end court storming. Oh, it's gonna happen tomorrow. tomorrow. Just do it. It's gonna right happen way. tomorrow. Yeah. No, look, trust me. Starkville knows the right way to storm. They're not waiting no 30 second shot clock here. <laughs> no. They're does, fucking storming. All right. Does Stark a fifty dollar does a fifty dollar SGPN gift card pay bail? <laughs> I got a lawyer that you could talk to. He's kind of like Saul Goodman, but I mean I I know I know a lawyer in uh in Mississippi. Is the what lawyer Jay Billis? No. No. 
No, but that would be good. Uh, NC Nick got disconnected there. Is NC Nick still with us? I'm back He's now. Back. He's, He's back. What'd you say? Uh, I said Saul Goodman was effective. He was effective. Yes. Uh, George Mason, NC Nick's alma mater, is heading up to the Bronx. Rumble in the Bronx here against the Fordham Rams. George Mason's only laying one and a half. Yeah, Both teams. Fordham is five and ten at home. Mason is four and six on the road. Something's got to give. Give me the Patriots to get it done on the road at the Rose Hill Gymnasium. Mac, I think I lean to Mason. I don't think they'll get the same crowd that they got on Friday. Because Friday night, I mean, when they beat Duquesne, maybe it was just because it was Friday night. ESPN that place was jumping. Um, I think Mason will get out of there live. So I'll lay it with Mason, but I'm not betting it. NC Nick, what are you doing here in the Bronx? Yeah, I think fading Mason over the weekend at Loyola Chicago was might have been the easiest play of the oh, entire week. So easy. I mean, that, I in, Colorado, that year. in Colorado, Utah was the yeah. two easiest fucking plays. But I'm back on Mason now. You know, I, I I think after the big win, they had their loss, and now they they get back up and they take care of business against Fordham. I got a lock in the great. We're going back to the Mac. Bowling Green is for real. I understand they just came off a rivalry game. Oh, I understand man. they came off a rivalry game. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Miami, Ohio is dog shit on the road this year. They're absolute dog shit. Bowling Green is going to win by count this double digits against this Miami, Ohio team. <laughs> so lay the three and a half, lock it up, fly high with the Falcons tomorrow. Fly, baby. Fly. Oh, man. In case the chat was wondering on some of these uh, road performances um, from the great Red Hawks this year, they lost by 10 to Texas State on the road. They lost by 30 at St. Bonaventure. They lost by 20. Well, at Ohio State, that's okay. They lost by 18 at Davidson. They lost by 10 at Wright State. They lost by 11 at Western Michigan. They lost by only seven at Ball State. Uh, no, they beat most I'm sorry. That was one of their road wins. They lost by 16 at central Michigan. They lost by nine at Ohio. They lost, uh, where's next. They lost by what? 21 to Western Michigan. They've got their ass whooped pretty much every game on the road. This is, this is cash. This is cash. Get on in Mac. What are you doing here? I think it reeks, so I'm gonna take Miami of Ohio, but I'm not fucking betting Miami of Ohio. I have more. I at least trust Ball State and their coaching staff. I do not trust Lexington Steel, especially off a 30 point win. This is another one where I think we're all on Bowling Green against Toledo, and and that hit. It was a, a great play, but coming off that win, I gotta fade him now. So I'm with Mac. I'm gonna go Miami of, of Ohio, but I mean Bowling Green. When when you watch them play, they got guys. Yeah, so I'm They're surprised. Winning this game. Todd Simon is a very good coach. They're winning this fucking game. If he was that good of a coach, he should have a better record in the MAC than eight and six. That's year one. I'll take year the one. You're talking about they're seventeen and ten. You remember how bad they were last I'm year? Just saying they got yeah. a more talented roster than everybody not named Akron and Kent State probably. I'd say he's doing a and, good job in Toledo. In yeah. Toledo, yeah. Um, all right, I'll fly solo. You guys, money be made. Chat, come with me. All right, don't be like these bitches. All right. Uh next up, Pitt is at Clemson. Oh man. I did <laughs> a deep dive in this half, game. Play six and a half. I'm seeing I'm seeing seven and a half. I'm seeing Woo! seven and a half. God damn. Pitt's getting seven and a half points. So I did a deep you know, Pitt since joining the ACC started out two and oh against Clemson and hasn't won a game since. I repeat. They started out two and zero against Clemson when they joined the ACC in 2012, and they have not won a game since. They do, but Pitt has also showed a knack for winning in good road environments in the ACC. Whether it was Duke, whether it was NC State, who was the third one? They won another one. I feel like with Syracuse, maybe Virginia, no. Virginia. Virginia, yeah, at Virginia. Um, I'll take Pitt in the seven and a half. I'll say this. If you're looking for money line plays like last night when I gave away Campbell, that probably loses right now. Um, 
I do think Pitt's capable of winning this on the money line. They've proven that, but they could also lose by 30. I'll take <laughs> Pitt plus seven and a half. No luck. Mac. You mean if Blake Henson doesn't make six threes, they're going to get blown the fuck out like every other game. Lock up Clemson. They can match up. They've already played. They have the guys to match up with him. Uh, and if Blake Henson doesn't make six threes, they get blown the fuck out. It's every single game with this team. Uh, Clemson, lock. Uh, Rob Donaldson's seeing eight. You can get it eight, man, at eight. At, I got to start buying in soon. I mean, oh, it's a bait. It's a bait. Who the fuck is Clemson? I know they have their number though. That's the thing. When I did their history, I was like, how have they won this many games in a row? NC Nick, ACC specialist. What are you doing here in Clemson, South Carolina? I don't know. The ACC, the ACC specialist was, was kind of torn on this one. (laughs) Usually when I'm torn, I lean on taking the points. Give me Pitt. I mean, I could see any range of outcomes here. I could see Pitt losing by 30. I could see Pitt winning. (laughs) And, I mean, and basically, like you know, Pitt's last four games. First off, they're what's Pitt now? Eighteen and nine. This game is summarizes their last four games because I could see them having any record in these last four games. <laughs> they have Clemson, then Boston College, Florida State, and NC State. Four winnable games, and if they win all four. They 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 won. They're twenty two and nine, but they could lose all four. <laughs> I don't know. I'm taking the points. Blake is uh, what. Nuts. One last thing, like you guys mentioned that Clemson has Pitt's number. Well, Duke also had Capel's number, and Capel beat Duke at Duke. How happy year. he was to come in. Oh, are you locking up Pitt? Are you wearing your yeah, Pitt shirt? On, by the way? No, 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 no. I, Pitt shirt. I, no I, I was just making a point. No, what I'm shirt is that? Wearing oh, first okay. yeah, that should be okay. each ship. Pitt, Pitt colors, though. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't know. If that keeps rising, I'm, I'm going to bet that. He's going to have his Pitt underwear on tomorrow watching this fucking game. Mm-hmm. We know no beating. BYU is heading to Lawrence, Kansas. Kansas laying six and a half. Does this game sting a little bit? Yes, I kind of thought this line one. would be yeah, nine and one. a half, ten. Yeah, yeah. Six, six and a half. I'm still taking Kansas. Terrified of this line. No bet. Mac? I got a couple ballsy ones tomorrow. I'm locking BYU at the fog. I think BYU is going to be up at the half, just like they were up at Baylor, up at Texas Tech. And then I think we bet Kansas when they're down in a sleepy spot because they're coming off the big Texas win, six o'clock prime time, ESPN. They got Baylor on deck. I think there's a sleepy spot for the Jayhawks at the fog. They come back and win by three or four. NC Nick, what are you, you doing you, in this matchup here? Yeah, Colby, I, I was telling you before the show that I hate this day because every almost every other line stinks. And this is another one. I mean, Kansas should be favored by eight and a half, not six and a half. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go Kansas. Nine I'm, and a half. I'm yeah. not fucking. I'm not touching this. No yeah. way. No way in hell. Okay, Campbell has the ball. Twenty seconds left. It's all tied up in double overtime. Just take out. You make sure you get the shot up. Two seconds left. Do not give this Wilmington team a chance <laughs> to get a shot off. Are you ready? For, are you ready for the second Big Twelve comeback uh, tonight? Uh, TC's down fifteen with nine minutes. We had a dust up. Momentum changes a little bit. TCU finally hits a jump shot. Watch this thing. This thing will come right down the wire, like every Big 12 game. Yeah, there's ESPN two commissioners plan to address court storming. Get this shit out of here. Um, <laughs> Fucking your mark. Valparaiso is getting 15 and a half at Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa all for rivalry win, much like the Bowling Green angle. They took down Drake, their rivals. Give me Valpo plus 15 and a half just because of that. It's a little bit of a letdown spot. Mac, what are you doing here? I struggle with this one. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Valpo has not won since a freaking about November. It feels like um, they covered by half a point. Give me Valpo. They lose by 12 <laughs> guys. Nick, what, what if I told here? you, what if I told you Valpo was the third best team in the country on the road? ATS <laughs> <laughs> Ow, 11, really? 11 and two. I'm ah. on Valpo. I'm going to lock it up. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I love it. I actually think this line's about three points off, too. Uh, Cocktail Napkin has uh, Valpo <laughs> plus 13 and a half. So, hey, let's you go. You know what? I, I don't have a single spot that I truly love on today's slate. I've just been letting the three of you guys ride. I'll jump in on this one with Nick. Let's go. There we go, Noah. I love it. I love ballsy plays. Double lock on Valpo. Let's go. Shout out to Joseph Spencer that says Filipowski injury changed to soreness with no imaging. 
Uh, hilarious. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's your image. YouTube.com slash the college experience. Subscribe. Hit that like button, folks. I see 260 people in this bitch. Get on over there. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. Come on. ULM is at Texas State. Texas State's laying five and a half. Call me crazy, but me and me and the bet detective were looking for we were fishing for money line plays tomorrow. ULM is six and four in their last ten, including a couple of decent wins. I agree. Give me ULM, no bet, but are you looking for a money line because you're bored? I can see this one hitting. Mac, what are you doing here? Yeah, I, I I like the dog here too. Uh this is fringe lock for me, man. This is too many. I, I, I think Monroe has a chance to win this game outright. NC Nick, Sunbelt specialist. <laughs> I'm gonna lean on Sunbelt. Texas State. They uh coming home after four straight road games. They got the last one against Georgia State. I think they win and cover this one too. Yeah. Yeah. Um hey, Texas Southern won by like ten. They did? Yeah. Damn it. No. I don't know how. What? <laughs> they won by eight. We cash on Texas Southern. I had that counted as a loss. So did I. <laughs> hey, what happened in this camel game while I was talking? This is why I can't do these early fucking shows. Two and a half seconds left. It's going to be Who's an inbound. Got the ball? Campbell. They, would they miss a shot and get an offensive rebound? Uh, they went up for a layup and it got swatted out of bounds. I don't know what they're looking at. Okay. Um. TCU's down 13. Come on, TCU. Come and on. currently Mississippi Valley State's up one 11 minute mark. Winless Mississippi Valley State. They they need the storm. You st- let me tell you. I don't care if it's like Detroit. If you're at the Harrison complex down there in uh Mississippi, you storm tonight. You fucking storm. Um UNLV. No, no, I'm sorry. Not UNLV. SIU Edwardsville is laying one and a half at Eastern Illinois. This is kind of a Kind of a good game. Rivalry game. Uh they played on December 29th. SIU won by nine. Revenge on the mind. Give me Eastern Illinois plus one and a half. No lock. What are you doing here? Yeah, I I'm gonna be on EIU, the home team in, in, in a rivalry. They lost two on the road. They were competitive in both. I think EIU is gonna win the game. Uh, check the pick space. Might be a lock tomorrow with the home dog in a rivalry. And we're headed to double overtime in Campbell. Wow. Uh, Jesus, man! <laughs> Hope dog it up for me, but I'm I not can't. I don't it. like hosting a show while this shit's going on. I don't like this early. This early time shit. Uh, what you, you're going? You're on Eastern Illinois, Nick. I am. All right, it's blaming you, Nick. I think so because it's going to come back to court storming somehow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right. Anything bad happens on the planet, it's because these jackasses want to get rid of court storming. All right. I don't care where the fuck you're at in the planet. All right. Um, so, you know, I've been riding Wyoming recently and I've been eating shit left and right, but this is the one, this is the one UNLV going to Laramie. Wyoming is catching six. They're eight and four at home in Laramie. I will take the points and I'll sprinkle a little bit on the money line with the Cowboys. What is UNLV nonsense out of here? Mac, what are you doing here? I am with you. The only thing that like made me a little bit hesitant is UNLV for some reason is better on the road. I guess, I guess it makes sense. College kids away from fucking Vegas, but they just beat Colorado State. Um, that was a big win, and Wyoming's going to clip them. Let's go, money line. Double luck. Anyone else want to get down on this cowboy shit? I'm with you guys, but I'm going to pass on the lock here. I mean, that, that UNLV win at the pit a couple weeks ago has me a little nervous. I'm in here to make it a triple lock with Wyoming. Woo. There we go. See, come on NC Nick. I mean, Uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to save you guys from the quad lock. No, thank you. (laughs) There we go. He's going to take one. Triple lock with the Wyoming Cowboys. Let's go. Um, I can't believe this is in double overtime. Uh, (laughs) Texas is at Texas tech oh. final time. You know, they're never going to Lubbock ever again. <laughs> no. This is what sucks. This is what sucks with all this. We're going to get Texas and Columbia, South Carolina, and no one's going to care <laughs> or in Nashville. No one's going to care. 
your sport is getting worse right before our eyes from court storming NC Nick to Lubbock, Texas, not <laughs> playing Texas each and every year. There's no way. And by the way, shout out to, I was doing the show with CJ. Someone jumped in the chat. That was a diehard Texas fan. And they, and he said, they better storm if they win. Yeah, they better t- Texas tech better storm. If you're Hell going yeah. to this game, if you're in Lubbock, listening to this, you fucking storm. I don't care I don't how many security guards. Yes. You do it. You take, you take down them. I don't give a shit about Brett. Your marks fucking uh, is, is uh, he's, he's going to have a conference call. All right. <laughs> I'll give you a conference Just, call. Your yeah, marks. Yeah, fuck give him a way. fucking conference call. Put, put have a Brett, team's meeting. <laughs> put Brett Yarmark in that same shed that Mike Leach put Greg James's son. All right, uh, let's go. Lock up the Red Raiders against this bullshit Rodney Terry Texas Longhorn team. Texas Tech by a thousand tomorrow. Let's go. Mac, what are you doing here? Yeah, they're, they're, this is a once in a lifetime for them. Last time Texas goes there, we saw it. Um, we we saw it when Beard went there. That place is going to be similar to that, and the momentum of that crowd. It's, I'm sure it's going to be a blackout there. They're going to drill them, it, it, and they're off the loss of UCF by 20. I mean, this is a nice bounce back. Tech, lock it up and storm that goddamn court. <laughs> Let's go, and see Nick. You in on this one? Yes, yes, yes. But make sure you have your security measures not to interrupt the. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Uh, security <laughs> measures. Uh, uh, how is that? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he broke up. Thank God. The internet. Even I the think internet he, I think he did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. Even the internet said, no, we like court storming. We're in North Carolina is college basketball. Get the fuck out of here. We like court storming and security measures. You're going to break out the old, uh, the old, you know, uh, what the, the, the yard tape and measure how, how far security is away from the, from the court. Get this shit out of here. They storm, they storm hard. Noah, you with us? Yeah, I'm with you guys. And I, I just wanted to, Give the thumbnail for this show some shine because it, it's the Texas Tech. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby. Guns up. Good there work. Go. Shout well, out. Shout Lubbock's, out to Cam. Lubbock's different. Lubbock's different. Just like uh, Troy says in the chat. Let's go. Yeah, there we go. Quadruple lock. Red Raiders. Let's go. Currently, Campbell's up one, two minute mark. In Shout third, out to three. Brandon for the 10 bucks. Yes, thank you, Brandon. Appreciate you. Uh, Boise State is going to Colorado Springs, where Air Force, in my opinion, that was the most shocking win of the entire college basketball season. Yes. Air Force winning at the pit as a 19 point dog was, to me, the, the craziest win of the entire season. So I definitely think we should consider locking up Boise State minus nine and a half. After you win at the pit, <laughs> I just feel like Boise State's going to fuck you up. Um, I'm on the nine and a half. You guys can talk me into a lock here, Mac. Boise's you on a fucking roll now, too. Sorry to cut you off. Sorry to jump in line here. No, but they're on a no. fucking roll. We should lock Boise. They got the guy they Legion Hart. They beat yeah. Fresno, San Jose, and Wyoming. So I was, Air Force I, yeah, is worse than all of them. Yeah. I was just getting ready to make this case because there's been a lot of traffic and and rightfully so for the Mountain West, and Boise hasn't been talked about recently because they haven't been playing in these big games. They they've been playing Fresno, San Jose, and Wyoming. Um, but the, it's about to get real for them when they finish with New Mexico, Nevada, and San Diego State. I actually like Air Force here in the point in a sleepy spot before they get through that stretch. But I'm not I, betting Air Force after coming off a win. Nick, you want to lock this one? I, I guess you could argue that it's kind of a look ahead. But, yeah, I mean, Boise's competition hasn't been great, but they've been winning by 20 points or more mm-hmm. the last three games. Nah, let me go, Boise, but I'm going to hold off. Fuck it, I'll fly solo. Buck them Broncos. Lock it up. Play the nine and a half. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons are heading to South Bend, Indiana. And they're laying six and a half points. Ooh, what could go wrong? <laughs> I'll take a flyer on Micah Shrewsbury. Plus, I liked it better at seven and a half today, but it's down a point. Six and a half. No lock, though. Maybe, 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 maybe the picks page. What are, what are you thinking here? What are you doing, Mac? Steve Forbes agreed that anybody that 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 suggested that Duke was in the wrong um, was wrong. 
So, I mean, this is karma back at him. Notre Dame. Yeah, Storm, by the way. If you're in storm South Bend, right back at him. you storm. Right you go to the linebacker him. in after. You storm the linebacker in. Yes. You storm all over that stadium, whatever the hell their basketball stadium's called. And yes. uh, we get it. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go. Lock this Let's up. Go. Fuck Wake They're Forest. I'm done like with Wake Forest. I'm done with their little uh, bullshit athletic director that gave that gave Mike Leach a ha- Mike, Mike Leach a handshake deal to be Tennessee's next head coach. That piece of shit. All right, let's go. Shrewsbury's a good coach too. Oh, I, and first off, you have a team in Wake Forest that is just two and seven straight up on the road as it is, and then the spot is perfect for a home dog. I'm with you guys, Notre Dame triple lock. Woo! Oh, yeah. Where's Beanick? You jumping on this? And then they were back in the NIT. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take this one for the team, but you know what? I, I love Max, you know, angle here. <laughs> All right, right back at All him. right. I guess that means right we have a quadruple him. lock. Let's go. The Irish, I'm your leprechaun. I really hope Notre Dame storms court. <laughs> they should. They fucking should, but they're probably too pussy to do that. Um, uh, Vanderbilt's getting nine and a half at Arkansas. I like Troy's comment here. He goes, Notre Dame should storm and purposely Oklahoma drill Kyle Filipowski. <laughs> Wait, but they're not playing Duke. Uh, what? Huh? It, it's just a funny comment. It's just Troy Oklahoma <laughs> drill somebody. <laughs> uh, we got, I can't believe Campbell's only up one with 128 left. Um, Vandy's getting nine and a half in Fayetteville against Arkansas. Arkansas, they've won two straight, but guess what? Give me Jerry Stackhouse and Vandy to, to stay within the nine and a half. Mac, what are you doing here? By the way, we got to give Jerry Stackhouse a little bit of a shout out for that cover on Saturday. He he pressed the <laughs> walk-ons to make sure he got the cover, and then yeah. t- called off the dogs when it was 15. He goes, all right, we covered. <laughs> um, yeah, so shout out to Jerry Stackhouse. I think he's playing for the cover again. Give me uh, the Commodores. NC Nick, what are you doing here in Fayetteville? I'm going to go Arkansas to win three in a row with Vanderbilt. This is their second back-to-back road trip. I think the Razorbacks pull it out and cover. All right. I was doing the SGP show this morning around 11 a.m. Pacific, and, uh, you know, I was sitting there, and I, I, we talked about this NC State-Florida State game, and I said, yeah, NC State's the better team. And then I said, wait a second. NC State's about to make the NCAA tournament. They're very close to making the NCAA tournament. I, I don't think they're that close, are they? I saw someone have them on like they're, I don't know if it was like, no, I don't think it was first four hours. No, they're not in right now, but I'm saying they're on that bubble. Um, they have North Carolina on Saturday. That's a huge game. You know what happens before huge games? You get upset by not paying attention. Florida state is favored. Why are they even favored against NC state? I will lay the two or two and a half with the Seminoles and you can lock that thing up. Let's go. Mac, what are you doing here? They haven't played this year. All these goddamn ACC teams are the fucking same to me below fucking average outside of Duke and Carolina. Um, give me Florida state. Let's go. I'm with you. Lock. Yeah, I, you talked me into it. I like the spot. I like the spot. I this like is the, the spot. game they lose. Like I said, I like the spot. So, I like the spot. I, I they're agree. seventeen and ten, I think. Right? Uh, if someone's saying that, oh, they're sniffing the NCAA tournament. Well, guess how you unsniff? You lose to fucking Florida State, and then you get Carolina and Duke in the next two matchups. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. I like. The spot. Uh, NC Nick, what are you doing here in Tallahassee? I mean, lately it's like NC State. They're they they're up one game, down one game, up one game, down one game. This is the the game they're down. I think it's as simple as that, especially on the road. So give me the Knowles too. I'm not going to lock it though. Sleepy 9 du- PM slot, baby double lock on the Seminoles. Let's go. Uh, moving along. This is my favorite play of the night. It's gone up though. Since the two o'clock show, even I was laying eight and a half. Actually, let me, let me search around real quick. Cause I want to get my clients the best call 1-800 pick Dundee here, folks. Um, yeah, it's eight and a half everywhere now. Son of a bitch. But I mean, I already bet this seven and a half, but we can still do it at eight and a half. I was going to win by double digits tomorrow against Penn state. And you could, I love the Hawkeyes. take that to the bank. My favorite play of the whole day is the Iowa Hawkeyes. Obviously I liked it better at seven and a half than eight and a half, but 
It is what it is. Lay it. I was playing better ball down the stretch. This is a must win game for them. Mac. You know what? I, speaking of which, trying to get the best of the line, one of the uh, best insults I've gotten over the net or last 48 hours with all these new uh, private school pussy friends I have is uh, always getting the best number. They said, all you do is just get the best number. I said, well, isn't that the point of uh, picking the game? So uh, I'm with you. <laughs> Iowa, lay the points, lock it up. And shout out to the private school pussies. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, NC like, Nick, you have an okay, opportunity a for a tr- <laughs> You have an opportunity for a triple lock at Iowa City. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely on Iowa. I mean, I give credit for Penn State playing better the second half of the season, but Iowa at home, I think this is. I think they're definitely to play here. So you know what? I'll uh, I'll ride with you guys again. Triple. Let's fucking go. They're getting better. Noah, also bring back Jake's comment in a second here. But triple lock the Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's go. Shout out to Jake Paquin, folks. Jake Paquin, uh, it, he does great work. He handles our merch store. I have gotten about 20 fucking DMs, and I've seen the comments section over the past 48 hours saying we need a, a court storm t shirt. I have informed Jake. I know I received text messages from Mac, from Noah, from Jong. Shout out to Jong. <laughs> right? We need court storming t-shirts. Jake's on the case. Just like the bet detectives on the case. Jake Paquin is on the case. So we got it coming. And then Jake, for those, Jake, for those that are asking about the flash shell code, it'll come out when that shirt comes out. <laughs> there we go. And then J- Jake, we need to have the same shirt with the big circle and a cross through it. Okay. <laughs> no, no, Jake, no. don't listen to him. No. Um, Cancel we storm and right we now. storm. Yeah. I mean, we could do something with the storm trooper. There's a lot of shit we could do storm, uh, like a fucking uh, Doppler radar thing. Just, we gotta, we gotta figure this out. Um, All I'm sc- asking if, if there's a court on the t-shirt, the TC logo is the court logo. You know? You've know, uh, you already got like mm. four or five people in the chat saying they're ordering one right now. No, I'm uh, telling you, I got like, uh, dude, I, pro- I, I think I have 20 to 25 messages saying, why don't you guys have a shirt about this? Let's go. Let's fucking go. Load this thing up. Yeah. Uh, you know, come on. Casey Let's, said he's going to buy one in every color for him and his fiance. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, currently, Perry View took a two point lead on Mississippi Valley State, and Campbell's up three with 11 seconds left or 12 seconds left here. Foul, foul, foul. Um, Utah State's laying 11 and a half at the Save Mart Center in Fresno. Give me Fresno plus 11 and a half. If I'm having a great day, it's a late game. I might bet this thing. Give me Fresno with the points. Mac, what are you doing here? Yeah. I, so we talk and Rob makes a good point. Sometimes the rest can be and Nick too. The rest can be bad. Now I think when you're off a loss and, and it's stuck with you for a week, you come out bats out of hell, ready to fucking rock and roll. They're coming off their biggest win of the year. San Diego state had the field of 68 there. I think just a sleepy spot. I want to lock Fresno. I kind of like it. And see, Nick, yeah. what do you like? Of, what do you think about this game at the Save Mart Center? I mean, Fresno has lost back-to-back games by thirty-plus points. Great spot. I'm gonna go Utah State. And Did they Campbell- only had forty-one against San Diego State. They're ready for like a little bit of an explosion here. Already for oh a fifty-four God. point out. Yeah. Hey, forty-one is a lot of points for UVA. <laughs> Did you guys just see the Campbell game right now? Oh, did it go off him? They're, they're up to it. Goes off his foot. It goes off his foot. So you, Wilmington's going to get the ball now with eight seconds left. All you had to do was inbound the fucking ball, you losers. Um, Colby, we <laughs> should we should buy in on Fresno here. San Diego State's off. Or they're off a thirty-two point loss. San Diego State. I mean, Utah State is. Yeah, yeah. No, Fresno's so, off the thirty-two Fresno. point loss. Pay attention, Colby. Oh. Oh. I'm they're, sorry. They're actually, I'm trying to watch this fucking ending here. They're, um, they're both technically off San Diego State. Utah State got the win of the year for them against San Diego State. Place was on fire in Logan per usual. Yeah, I'm with you. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, Fresno. Sleepy spot yeah. here. Fresno loses by six. All right, by four. I don't even think it's that crazy. This is a, a two possession game with three minutes left. Let's go. Uh, it's like well, everybody's I'm, balls that they might win, right, Noah? I can't believe that shit went off of him. What a fucking loser. Um, This is my second favorite play of the night. Colorado State's going to destroy Nevada tomorrow. Colorado State has lost, what, two straight. 
Nevada's won three straight. Colorado State's 14 1 at home. Nevada beat them by 13 on January what, 27th or something. I'm all over the Rams. Obviously, I like the better at six and a half, but that's why you get, get the lines early. Let's go. The lines are early. Seven and a half is what I'm seeing right now. Mac, what are you doing here? Yeah, love the Rams here. And uh, yeah, accuse you of getting the better of the number. Uh, you're a cheater. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> NC Nick, triple lock or what? This is why I hate North Carolina right now is that we don't have legalized gambling for another two or three weeks. And the, yeah. currently my, my, my guy, my book, he doesn't offer games until the day of. So what the I hell is this, that, by I, the way? I know, seriously. I picked this game on Tally's side at minus three and a half. Jumped all over it at about 4 p.m. Eastern time. But, of course, I can't bet it because I, I can't do DraftKings or FanDuel here yet for another couple of weeks. Now it's jumped up to seven and a half. I still like it. I'm still going to triple lock with you guys. But, man, at three and a half or four and a half, I was like, I Come know, on. I know, man. It was just a smash spot. Um, triple lock, though. Let's go. I think they're going to win by double digits. Let's yeah. get it going. Colorado State minus the points. San Jose State's getting 22 and a half in the finale here against San Diego State. I I just can't. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. But I will take the points. I'll take the points. They can stay around enough of that, right? Mac, what are you doing here? I mean, you know, when we do these late night shows, we like to force one in. This is going to be hard to force one in tomorrow night. I mean, San Jose State is god awful. And but it is too many points in my opinion, especially when San Diego State is off of a 30 point win and they have UNLV on deck, which is a little bit of a rivalry. Give me a San Jose State. We may bet this during the show live tomorrow, or at least I will. <laughs> NC Nick, what are you doing down in San Diego, California? I'm going to take the points too. I think it a it, it's a bucket or two too much. San Diego State wins by 18 or something. Okay, hang on. We got 11 seconds left. Inbounding this. Oh my God! Just don't let him have a three. Just, just. Oh yes, yes. Oh man, we're so close. We're so close. Um, I foul. told you my favorite play. My favorite play is Iowa. Um, it's gone up a point. Maybe that makes a little bit of a difference. Maybe I would say, no, I still think Iowa and Colorado state are my top two plays, but I do like, I like a lot on the board. I would say, uh, uh, those two though would be the ones that jump to mind most, um, for a dog. I know Robert was asking about the outright dog. I think it's Wyoming. I think if you had to tell me which dog is the best money line play to do for a dog, one that's got a little bit of value. I can't do a two and a two point spread. I think it probably would be uh, Wyoming as the best play to play on the money line. Maybe Notre Dame. I'd say Wyoming or Notre Dame is is what you want. Um, Mac, what are you doing top play? Um, are, are we doing two like we usually do? Sure, sure. Uh, I'll go Texas Tech and Mississippi State. Love both the spots. Both places are going to be on fucking fire. Um, guns up. Hail state. Let's go. <laughs> Campbell missed at the line, but got the offensive rebound. Hilarious. Nick, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm going to share some of that. I'm going to Texas tech and I'll say Colorado state. Boom. Noah. Texas top. tech and Wyoming. Ooh, so we might have a little go. parlay. I mean, we, we agree on a lot of these. And yeah, I mean, what do you guys want to do parlay wise? Well, I can tell you State, this: Colorado State, Wyoming. Was that all triple locks? Wait, say it again. Tech, Hale State, Colorado State. I like that. I like that. Nick, you get on board with that? I didn't. I didn't lock up Michigan, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi, Mississippi State. If I could talk, I think Noah might have, uh, but I picked him. So uh, yeah, I did let's not. Go. That was a double. Okay, so that was only a double lock, but I think we both were on the side of Stark Vegas. Well, you know, nothing like a good sweat in Iowa. We nothing like, like Iowa. a good sweat. I do like the Iowa, Iowa one added to yeah. it. Nothing like a good sweat, but I'm sorry, I'm just going to tout my plus three thirty. Yeah, we Campbell, have let him Campbell's it. money line. They're storming the court. They're storming the court. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Someone in North Carolina's yes. got some balls. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's fucking go. Shout out to the Campbells. They're my team now. I'm moving to Bowie's Creek. Let's go. 
is there 10 people instead of one person? Because the game I went to at Campbell last year was, was pretty damn empty. <laughs> it might be, it might be uh, 22 and a half. That one person looks like half, <laughs> half on the court, half in the stands. <laughs> Folks, uh, once again, to repeat our parlay, I think we're on Iowa, Colorado State. Who was the third team? Texas Tech. Texas Tech. Texas Tech. Iowa, Colorado State, Texas Tech. I will see you at the finish line. Shout out to the to to Campbell for storming. College basketball is court storming. Don't ever forget that. Don't let the suits on TV tell you otherwise. Or this clown over here who's having cocktails. All right. I'm not anti court uh, storming. NC Nick is on Twitter at NC underscore underscore N I C K. Please DM him all your hate regarding his opinion on Kyle Filipowski. All right. And (laughs) Moneyline Mac is on Twitter at Moneyline underscore Mac. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. Noah Beanick is on Twitter at Noah B77 underscore. Subscribe to the college baseball experience, of course. And uh, also. Uh, the Big Twelve experience, Moneyline Max doing a great job there in the Ride and Rush show, uh, and NC Nick and I college football experience Wednesday night we'll be live talking college football like we do each and every Wednesday y- year round we talk college football. All right, storm the field there too. Um, also check out the FCS college football experience. We just dropped an episode tonight, and uh, yeah, until next time, folks. This is the college football college basketball. Jesus experience. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here.